as usual, guys, if you like the content, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get into this. First of all, I'll start off, I made an adjustment to my mic. One of the comments had mentioned there's some clicking. I don't hear it on my end, like I'm using a, a laptop or desktop, I guess if you have earbuds or stuff like that, maybe there's some kind of residual noise or something like that. Hopefully I alleviated that with this adjustment. I will be getting a new mic. And I apologize for that. But anyway, let's get into this. So here we go. Kenobi part, th- Obi-Wan Kenobi part three. The recap basically just reminded me of more nonsense from the first two episodes. I could do another, easily another 20 minute video. It's just terrible. But anyways, let's get into this. So uh, Obi-Wan seeks guidance from Qui-Gon and he's sort of seeking him out and Qui-Gon never shows up. I don't really know why. I think it would have made a lot of sense for him to be there. I think it would have been really cool it's something that I added into my sequel trilogy where he, where Finn is a force sensitive guy and he's helping Finn along because Finn doesn't have a lot of guidance um, from the Jedi, obviously, because in my sequel trilogy, there's not a whole lot of them around and, and Luke is in captivity. So I just, I thought it'd be really cool actually, if he actually had showed up, of course he doesn't because nothing seems to happen with Obi-Wan other than him sort of running around and being essentially carted around by other people and decisions by other people being made for him and he's just kind of there he does see a vision and he cuts back to the line from Reva and Anakin Skywalker is alive he's been looking for you for a long time and it's not hard enough to try to and get information from Bail Organa I guess right that's what I was talking about in the, you know with, the, with some of my tweets and stuff people got really angry but it's like you know this whole idea of drawing out Obi-Wan by kidnapping Leia who is because Bale is friends with Obi-Wan, why wouldn't you just go talk to Bale? You're a mind reader, Reva. Why wouldn't Vader just send you... Which, by the way, mind reading has its own massive set of issues. Yes, Vader did feel what Luke was thinking to a degree, but you, you really got the sense it was very nuanced. It wasn't just hardcore reading his mind. Anyways, so Reva being able to read minds, I mean, if I'm Vader, I'm like, yo, go talk to Bale. Go suck that information of where Obi-Wan is. But he never does that in 10 years, and all of a sudden she she has this plan. It's just, it's silliness. It's just, Darth Vader's, Anakin's not a stupid guy. Like, he wouldn't just sit back. And then this episode confirms that he's been, like, hardcore searching for him. So why wouldn't he think to send Reva to read Obi, to read Bale's mind? It doesn't make any sense. And, this, and then people commented, oh, you know, they're trying to keep secret. No, they're not. No, they're not. Even on Tatooine, everybody knows what the Inquisitors are. Everybody knows. So the own show shows you that no. The Obi-Wan show tells you no. They know who they are. So this whole idea is nonsense. It, 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 there's no reason why Vader didn't either send Reva or go himself or, or you know, um, set up some sort of fake meeting and then Bail arrives and then he interrogates him or whatever, right? There's no reason why they couldn't have got this information from Bail Organa. It's, it's so silly. And the only reason they did it was to set up young Leia for nostalgia bait. I don't understand why people don't understand that. If she wasn't put in the fi- in this series for any reason other than to get you nostalgic and excited because it's Leia. That's it. She, there's no reason. There's no logical reason. And in writing, you need a logical reason. The last part of the vision where uh, they just had Vader's helmet looking at the screen was super cheese. Like, he's just staring at the screen and you're like waiting for it to end and there's there's nothing wrong with the staring at the screen thing i do that too the odd time but context is key and it has to it has to create a a either a an interest from the viewer of what that means or who that person is like i use it when you don't know who the big bad is and it's just him staring at the screen for a second and you're like whoa like i wonder who that is and you know it's sort of slightly revealing just vader's just staring at the screen it just looked kind of cheese to me anyways whatever that's a nitpick but so then you cut to vader's castle vader tells reva over a hologram that the grand inquisitor means nothing and kenobi is all that matters now again confirming that Obi-Wan was a huge priority for Vader. A lot of people said he wasn't in the Twitter arguing with me, and that's why things happened the way they did. Well, guess what? He was a huge priority, and he still didn't just deal with Bale himself. He did. He allowed this whole big charade. So anyway, the show's premise of Vader seeking out Obi-Wan already has an issue. So, so the writer's basic premise that they had, that Vader's been in, intensely all about Obi-Wan, yet didn't act on that 
desire and intensity to get Obi-Wan. So the show's writers themselves kind of just kind of contradicted themselves. They kind of broke what they were even trying to do as the premise of the show for the sake of this other Inquisitor coming up with this plan. It's, it's like, did they think we wouldn't know? Like they even put 10 years later on the opening shot of the first episode. So it's just, it's just really poorly written guys. And I don't know why they can't find writers that can write. I don't get it. Like they're out there. I know there are very good writers out there yet. This is what we get. And in very predictable fashion, Vader offers her the Grand Inquisitor status if she proves herself. I didn't like Vader's voice as much in this. It doesn't sound like James Earl Jones. Like, I haven't looked up if it's James Earl Jones. I don't spend a lot of time, like, with stuff like that. If someone can confirm in the comments. But it doesn't sound like him, and I don't think it's him. And I think, again, that just proves the low-budgetness of this show, that they weren't willing to pay him probably what he was asking, which he should be, as the most iconic villain voice in history of cinema. So... It doesn't sound totally right, and it's not very good. The CGI from inside Vader's castle definitely left something to, something to be desired, as did some of the CGI in the first two episodes. It just doesn't look as good as it should. And, and this is my argument why you shouldn't be doing TV shows for Star Wars. It should only be movies and, and the top-of-the-line situation. It just really diminishes the brand. Everything should be movies, and they should be not very often, and very well done, and and it, this just wasn't very good in terms of the CGI. So Ben travels with Leia, he fixes her droid, and they, they clearly have a, a relationship now. There's no denying it. This whole idea, you served my father in the Clone Wars, is officially a stupid line of dialogue. I'm sorry, it's dumb. They have a full-blown relationship with everything from happiness to anger to uh, fear, to adventure together, everything. I mean, the idea that she would say, you served my father in the Clone Wars. It's like, bro, I know you. Hey, Obi-Wan, it's me. Like, come on. Like, the, they, have, they have rendered several, well, probably 14 to 15 lines of dialogue in A New Hope completely stupid. Which, of course, no one's surprised by that that understands that these people don't care about the continuity. They don't care about things making sense. And they certainly don't care about the lore and this tradition and the history of the of the original trilogy at all. Then Kenobi and Leia land on some planet. I don't even remember what it's called because I don't really care. And meet a guy that's going to get her home. There's stormtroopers everywhere. Or sorry, they go there to meet a guy to get her home. And there's stormtroopers everywhere. And Ben tells her it was peaceful with families until the Empire came in. And then you see all these stormtroopers all over the place. And it's like, it seems like the Empire has a lot of power. Like, all these people arguing with me on Twitter that, oh, the Senate, they couldn't go after bail. They couldn't get bail because the Senate is so important. And if they mess with the Senate, there's going to be problems. Just because some guy in the New Hope, some random admiral, said that doesn't mean it's necessarily true if you're Palpatine, first of all. And second of all, the Senate, even in Star Wars' actual website, it, it, it says that it's it its power diminished basically from the time Palpatine took over, which of course it did because he had emergency powers and it's canon that he actually shut down the Senate on occasion. It, it, he he's gonna get his way no matter what. And anyway, so you got stormtroopers everywhere. So the the Empire is not full fledged, not Death Star level, but it's pretty dang well powerful at this point. It's pretty obvious. And part of that, when when you have an authoritative regime take over, is guys citizens in that galaxy or in that country whatever in our world but buying in and you have that example with the guy that transports Leia and Obi-Wan he's got the imperial flag and everything people buy into the so people are buying into the idea that order and in fact that that mole rat looking character even says that that you know we need more order right like so people buy into this idea of giving people this authoritative status if people don't buy into it it doesn't happen so like learn about authoritative regimes on earth and you'll get an idea right george understood that this was based on the nazis blah 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 blah. like the public has to buy in so clearly the empire's got a lot of power and and bail is inconsequential if he's part of the senate so this whole idea and again they he made an order to kill all the jedi and nobody batted an eyelash like like come on so our obi-wan starts to see visions of anakin at random times uh, this time there's no Vader suit. It's just just a burned up Anakin kind of um, 
he's just like it just shows his face and he's wearing a cloak blah 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 and he's standing on a hill and it's, it's like so so basically obi-wan's hallucinating that he's seeing anakin all over the place or at least a few times or whatever and reva arrives at that moon by mustafar i don't remember what it's called it's got the inquisitor tower and the porn parody inquisitors have some conflict over who's in charge and in the end, Reva's orders make them send out probes to find Obi. The other Inquisitor agrees with that, so they do it. And so they send out probes, and you're like, oh my gosh, they send out probes. This is a big galaxy. Like, where are they going to go? And you think, like, man, they're going to send out, like, a million probes, and then literally three. Three probes. In a gigantic galaxy. And again, this is an argument I've been making about Disney this whole time. They have shrunk this galaxy into, like, this thumbtack-sized galaxy it's three probes i expected when she said that there to be like literally thousands of probes going in every no three three probes and those probes are going to find obi-wan like it's just like they think you're stupid don't think just consume so then obi-wan goes to the rendezvous point um that fake jedi gave him i think Yes, it was fake Jedi, yeah, uh, from the previous episode, and it turns out to be a lie. Wow, I'm so shocked. Like, this is the most predictable crap ever. And Obi-Wan is just dumb in this show. And then Leia runs to the road, hitchhikes with some random. This is the mole rat face guy that's all about the Empire. And even Obi sees the Imperial flag on his vehicle and yet still gets in. Like, Leia hops in right away, and then he sees the Imperial flag, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll get in there. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, t- t- tell A to get off and get out. Don't go with this dude. He's pro-Imperial, obviously. But they do it anyway. And then Buddy pulls over to give a lift to a platoon of stormtroopers. And they say they're looking for a Jedi. Of course. There's nothing predictable about this show. It's all just so amazing. And then it's like, is it Obi-Wan that they're looking for? And then Ben accidentally calls her Leia in front of them. And then he makes, a re- so again, he's just incompetent in this show, like after all he's been through. And then he makes reference to seeing her mother in her, which was kind of nice comment as a viewer watching. But you still think back, like, why would you call her Leia, bro? You're a Jedi. You're supposed to be like so in tune and just like on point, especially, especially at where he is in his, in his Jedi-ness. Like he's, he's, he's a older mature jedi who's gone through everything he's gone through it it's just, it just sucks obi-wan just sucks he makes mistake after mistake and it's just it's sad and i wish he never met leia until a new hope but that line was nice if you take it out of context and just look at it as a line at this point the show again looks super low budge the cgi is not good lots of cheap california desert as usual and like a handful of extras then they come across a checkpoint and they send the probe droid out. The the stormtroopers send the probe droid out to probe these all the people and to, or to probe excuse me Obi Wan and Leia because the driver mole face guy says, "Oh yeah, check him out. You probably should because he's all about order, right?" And Ben doesn't want his picture taken and he kills the stormtroopers. Um, and then immediately another platoon arrives, almost as if the Empire had full organization and the Senate really doesn't matter. Like there's another there's another one and if he killed them off another one would show up because they just they have all these resources cough bail interrogation cough and then in low budget fashion after killing eight or nine stormtroopers Obi Wan gives up when three three of them get off the transport so he 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 murdered all these ones and then three other ones run off the transport and he's like oh no and he and he gets on his knees and 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 says whatever I'll, I'll 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 submit and you're like what what happened to you bro like you want to train luke because you're all about the jedi and yet you're just this bum now who doesn't he's just a wussy like it doesn't make any sense you guys like it's so contradictory the writers like they're dumb they don't see how that's contradictory i want to train luke owen no he's not going to train look what happened to anakin and then later in the episode he's pulling his buried lightsabers out of the sand so did you want to train luke or not bro like you're pulling your buried lightsabers out of the sand you buried them does the jedi even matter what is going on 
Then he's saved by an Imperial officer who received a transmission from Bail Organo. Okay. Saved again. Uh, didn't save him for much. Three stormtroopers that he just took care of eight or nine, but okay. Oh, and I guess there's infiltrators in the Empire as well, which I'm cool with. I like those ideas. I like having people on both sides um, as infiltrators in this woman, I guess. But actually, later in the episode, she said she joined the Empire thinking they were good and then realized they were bad. Alas. Meanwhile, Leia and Obi-Wan's relationship continues to grow. And I remind you, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Like, this is stupid. They know each other. Then the fake officer shows them, the fake or the, you know, the, the one who's pretending to be an officer but is really a rebel, shows them essentially the underground railroad for Jedi. If you don't know what that, I mean by that, the underground railroad was like a, a, a system that people put in place that would free slaves in America from... America from America through like a system of like houses and people and like a, like like a, a roadmap essentially to get into Canada. So this kind of reminded me of that just because like they're persecuted and they have to secretly get through the Empire and blah blah blah, blah. and so it's kind of like an underground road for Jedi, Jedi and then there's like a literal like tunnel and stuff and she sa- she says another Jedi has been through there because again there's still Jedi just everywhere. And so now, now this officially confirms that every planet that this show has featured has had Jedi on it. I, I remember Fallen Order, it was like, they, they were super rare, but whatever. And in Mando, they were super rare. M- M- Mando had a tough time finding a Jedi. Then for some reason, Vader shows up. He all of a sudden is obsessed with Obi-Wan. Well, not really, because now the show's confirmed he's been the whole time. But all the Twitter people that were commenting against me saying oh no it's because he didn't care he had other things to do and it's just ridiculous that he did nothing for 10 years now it's all about him or it's all about you know this this rivalry and i'm sorry but putting the most iconic villain of all time on the small screen this vader on tv sucks it just totally diminishes him i don't know how Lucasfilm doesn't see that. Like, it, this is just, just like, no, just movies only, you idiots. He walks way too fast. He doesn't walk like Vader at all. His mannerisms are not very good. The acting of Vader in this is not very good. And I know it's Hayden, but Hayden needed to do way more research because the guy who played him in Rogue One, you felt more like it was him. The way he moved and stuff was very... It was deliberate, but it's it's not rushed and it's not the same. It's just it's just as it's it flows like Vader always kind of just flowed in the way he moved like nicely, and Hayden is just he's, he's moving way too fast, and and I would again say I guess he was obsessed with Obi Wan after all, and then everyone said in the tweet in the responses Vader would never show himself. That's why he didn't talk to Bale. He's a secret, and then he's literally like right there walking around showing himself like it, it's nonsense obi-wan sends leia with the fake officer or the fake imperial officer or whatever the usurper and waits to see what happens with vader who breaks some teenager's neck for no reason and then he just starts killing random village people i mean he always had a reason for what he was doing he you know if somebody made a mistake or whatever he showed his power and he choked them out or whatever but now he's just like randomly killing poor villagers He's, he's basically becoming another nonsensical villain, another emotional, reactionary villain. And again, Anakin was emotional, but this is 10 years later. And then, after watching Vader kill all these innocents, Obi-Wan literally just runs away. He literally just runs away. What the heck happened? Then Vader confronts him, and he runs away again. And then Obi-Wan is consumed with fear over his former Padawan learner because reasons, I guess. Then he finally mans up. But to me, Vader ain't the learner here. It's Obi-Wan that's freaked out and afraid, right? Like, he's the one freaking out and running away. Then you think, oh, wait, he's, no. And then he doesn't man up, and he runs away again. So you keep having this back and forth, like he's going to fight, and then he just keeps running away. Uh, Then the Inquisitors start rounding up villagers. Like, why are you rounding up villagers? Obi-Wan's been found. You're not trying to lure him out or whatever Vader was trying to do. And they're just rounding them up for no reason. Like, it doesn't make any sense. 
And then Reva just happens to find the Underground Railroad Passage for utterly no reason. She's just walking around. She sees the droid that was in there that, that seemed to help them or whatever leave. And then she just she just goes, oh, that droid, that's a loader droid. That, there must be something in there, like, for absolutely no reason. It's so terrible. Then Q Obi-Wan running away again. And Vader finds him, and they fight, and Vader just destroys him. Again, I remind you, last time I was the le- learner, now I am the master. Well, no, because Obi-Wan keeps running, and Vader keeps catching him. Vader's able to pick him up in, like a rag doll, and then the learner throws Obi-Wan into the fire, into a fire that he bakes by moving whatever, some flammable crap on the ground, and lights it up at the force. The learner literally force pulls Obi- Obi-Wan around in the fire. He pulls him into the fire and like moves him around in the fire. The learner does that. He's the learner. That's the learner, guys. And he somehow had no burns. Like, you know, in A New Hope, Obi-Wan had no burns. And then when they fi- he finally gets out of the fire, they show like the little burns on his on his shoulder. Like he was in the fire for a, quite a while. I don't know if anyone knows, but you can get third degree burns in three seconds or less. And he's like in a fire, and he doesn't really get burned. It's just nothing makes sense. Then fake Admiral Lady shoots some stuff, uh, and saves Kenobi. And so far in three episodes, Ben is a total loser. He's a weakling idiot who hasn't accomplished anything. Or contributed anything to the plot. Like, he's following Leia around. He's doing... Like, it sucks. Um, and then that's all. He gets pulled out of there. I, I believe it was the loader droid helps out in that regard as well. Then one of my followers makes this, you know, very astute point. He says, The pick of the pick is of Vader waving goodbye to the loader droid as he whisks away with Vader's prized possession, Obi-Wan. And Vader is rendered impotent by the same fire he used the Force to extinguish a minute earlier. Which is true. He did do that. I forgot to mention that. So, I mean, none of it makes sense. I don't know how anyone can watch this and be like, Woo, this is awesome. Like, it doesn't make sense. Then you cut back to porn parody Inquisitors, randomly rounding up villagers again for zero reasons. I guess just to give them a reason to even be in the show, because they don't really need to be in the show. It's totally pointless. And then Reva travel, traveling down the same tunnel as Leia somehow ends up ahead of her despite never passing her again don't show reva like finding like a sewer main or finding some way to no she's just there and then that's where the episode ends leia running back towards the inquisitors with reva behind her obi-wan beat up or whatever i would i i i can just sense it that the next episode is going to start with Ray, reva holding her ransom until ben exposes himself again it's just round and round we go. Nothing makes sense. Ben's a bum. Inquisitors are pointless other than Reva. And everything's a mess. And the writing's terrible. And Vader makes no sense. And 15 lines of dialogue in the New Hope are complete crap now. The entire scene with Tarkin and Vader sucks. You know, when they're in the conference room, just the two of them together sucks now. It doesn't suck to me. This sucks, but... You know, if you're a Star Wars fan and you 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 want to go by canon, it's totally dumb. Leia's line is dumb. This show is just destroying the o- the OT. I, I knew that was gonna happen, you know, and yet it's just it's just sad. Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Have a good day.